Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about my first pair of actual waterproof pants, the acronym P38GT. First I will talk a bit about waterproofness, then I will go through all the features of the pants and also make a comparison to the other P38s, that, uh, other versions of the P38 that came out this year. And then I will conclude with my point of view on the practicality of Gore-Tex pants. Also, if you could hit that subscribe button, that would be really appreciated. I am almost at the 1000 sub, so yay. Uh, thank you in advance. So to start with waterproofness, it has become a bit of a meme uh, when it comes to tech or clothing within the community, but also to people who might not be entirely familiar with technical clothing thinking that we're just wearing waterproof stuff. Um, when in fact, most tech wear is not waterproof at all, nor is that something everyone needs or desires. Funny enough though, I believe these are the first actual waterproof tech wear trousers, considering tech wear to be clothing meant for urban everyday life. There are of course enough Gore-Tex bottoms available for, from several outdoor brands meant for different kinds of outdoor activities like skiing, cycling or hiking. But I would not consider that tech wear because of the reasons I already mentioned. Also acronyms for the Gore-Tex trousers after 20 years of producing Gore-Tex garments. I know there have been Gore-Tex windstopper pants like the WSP3A from 2005, but windstopper is not by any means waterproof. So why is this? Well, if you've worn Gore-Tex outdoor pants in the past, you will probably know that three layer Gore-Tex Pro waterproof pants might not be the most comfortable fabric to wear casually on a daily basis and which you would probably only choose if it was absolutely necessary. I personally don't really know because I've never owned Gore-Tex outdoor pants, but I could imagine knowing the feel of classic Gore-Tex. I think this is also probably part of the reason the P38 didn't sell out. Uh, there's still a size medium available on the mother side and I have barely seen anyone wear it. Another reason I think is that it was released in the spring summer collection uh, of this year, which I found a bit curious at first, but Erlson has pointed out in several interviews that he, they don't really design for the seasons, most garments being multi-season appropriate. So the idea was probably just to execute it at some point and last spring was the moment that it was finished and then they just released it. A third reason might be the price point because at almost 1800 euros, I believe it's the most expensive uh, acronym pants to date. Then again, a 600 euro apron sold out instantly. So price is maybe not necessarily a barrier for <laughs> acronym fans. So why the hell did I get them? Well, at first when they came out in April, I, I did immediately love how they looked. Uh, they have quite a classic BDU silhouette and with the cuff zippers closed creating that pan tucked in uh, boot kind of look and in combination with the super smooth and slightly shiny look of Gore-Tex this was immediately something that appealed to me. I didn't immediately buy them because well at first the price did kind of frighten me the, the pants being more expensive than most acronym hard shells. It was spring so I didn't really feel like buying Gore-Tex pants was the thing to do at that time. Little did I know back then though that it would be raining all summer so I guess I they could have already been useful uh, because I did get completely soaked quite a few times uh, just walking from the station to my office in 20 minutes uh, during the summer. So yeah in Holland the country where I live it's Gore-Tex pants are almost always appropriate, but I was also, as probably many of you still are, quite skeptic about the comfort of a pair of Gore-Tex pants. And at almost 1800 euros, not really something to just try out. Even though I really love Gore-Tex as a jacket fabric because, well, as I mentioned before, it rains here like half of the time, no matter what season. I mean, this is the rain map of Holland, you guess in which part I live. So yeah, Gore-Tex actually really changed my life since I discovered it and I love it. So I have actually been searching for Gore-Tex pants for quite a while now, but never found one that I would want to wear in the streets, style-wise. Before I proceed, I really need to make a shout out to 167 Gangrene for being the only person who I knew who actually had the pants, who could tell me anything about them and actually convinced me I should give them a try uh, because he told me about the stretchy nature of them. I mean, it says so on the site, but I never, it never really dawned on me until he told me about it and kind of, and that kind of changed my whole perspective on it. And also it might explain why there haven't been casual Gore-Tex pants up until now, because the Gore-Tex stretch technology is actually quite 
new and has only been around since 2020. Right now there are a few snowboard pants available by Volcom for instance, uh, but I do believe that the P38 GT are still the only Gore-Tex, especially Gore-Tex stretch pants in the streetwear category. Uh, so I think this makes them quite unique. So to dive a bit deeper into the fabrics, these pants are constructed out of three types of Gore-Tex. The three layer Gore-Tex Pro stretch I already mentioned, uh, which is used in the front of the upper pockets, going all the way down to the front of the legs and the cuffs. And it is a two-way stretch fabric. It stretches vertically on the front and uh, on the butt and crotch region. The fabric is turned 90 degrees, uh, stretching the back horizontally. The waist region the inside of the upper pockets and the outside of the cargo pockets and back of the calf are composed of three layer Gore-Tex Pro Most Breathable. Another Gore-Tex Pro version that was introduced in 2020. And then the cuffs are made of a two layer Gore-Tex stretch laminate uh, that was also used on the back of the J69 that was released in the same drop. Seen on the elbow of the J1E and the triangular uh, panels of the just released uh, J16. I think this is a very cool development I, because it gives the different panels a very different functionality, uh, which I will focus on a bit more later. On the other side, I can imagine this makes the construction much more expensive because smaller and more complicated panels of the fabric need to be cut. So it's probably much less efficient to produce as well as the R&D that goes into the influence, the combination of the fabrics will have on the integrity of the construction and the range of motion. The range of motion is great, even though the stretch fabric is not extremely stretchy, which I think is a good thing because too much stretch would probably weaken the construction and endanger the waterproofness. But because the front panel is so long, the stretchability of the entire panel is quite large. You can actually do yoga in them. Not that I will or that anyone should, but just to demonstrate <laughs> that you are in no way that they are in no way restrictive in motion. Which to me is one of the core values and benefits of acronym clothing. And one of the reasons why I don't necessarily understand the appeal of Stotts or encapsulated nylon. The latter being one of the more popular fabrics in recent days and which we will talk about a bit again uh, when we come to the other P38s. So you can very easily bend your knee as far as you can without any resistance of the pants. This makes it great to ride a bike in, which I'm very glad of because this is one of the main reasons I wanted to get these pants. To be able to ride in any weather and be completely confident about staying dry. The back panel stretches in the same manner but horizontally, which is also great uh, when bending forward, especially when not having a small butt like I do. This also makes it great to sit in a chair with, uh, making them very comfortable pants to take to the office and riding bikes in bad weather along the way without having to have separate rain clothes because I because they do dry super fast as you would expect from Gore-Tex. Pocket, pocket time. Sorry, I don't know why I did that. There are surprisingly and almost disappointingly few pockets on these pants, uh, just six to be exact. There are the upper pockets that open with the now almost standardized uh, tension zips. At first, I had to get a bit used to the fact that the pockets open by zipping inwards, uh, because most zippered pockets, I think, or in my head, zip outward when you open them. But after using them for a while, I, how the pockets open actually feels quite logical now. As I mentioned earlier, the front of the pocket is made of the stretch Gore-Tex, so filling the pockets is quite comfortable. It being able to bulk outward instead of the object maybe poking into your groins. Also, it's very comfy to put your hands in them, which is very convenient because there are no deep pockets which I will get to in a second. Inside the front pocket are also four loops uh, in total to which you can attach all kinds of things like carabiners, for instance, or a 3A and V3TS. Fun feature, in a way, compensating the lack of other pockets, I guess. On the side, there are two zippers behind which one would expect a deep pocket, but actually opens up the pant. When I first discovered this, I was kind of disappointed because I love the deep pockets. I like putting my hands in them because I always have cold hands. And I knew from the product pictures these zippers were just openings, but somehow I had imagined that somewhere in between there would be some kind of other deep pocket. I guess because I know that all other P38s do have deep pockets. But these pants are meant to also be able to function as an overpant. 
So via these openings, you can then reach the deep pockets of other pants you would be wearing underneath. This concept has also been very influential for the fit, which I will get to later. So no deep pockets, just openings. Now I did not buy these pants to use as overpants, so you might think that these openings would be useless to me, but actually I appreciate them very much. Because of the waterproof nature of Gore-Tex, the fabric might be breathable, but is completely windproof. So this kind of works two ways, meaning that Direct airflow does not move through the fabric, resulting in a situation that if I close the side openings and the ankle openings and make a sudden movement that would compress the air inside the pant, like squatting down real fast or cycling or running, the air cannot directly escape, so that makes the pant balloon a bit. And after the air has gotten out, after a second or so, if I stretch my legs back, then the pant will semi-pull vacuum. This is a bit weird and not very comfortable per se, Luckily, it's very easily fixed by opening up the side zips and preferably not completely uh, zipping down the ankle zips because this then allows a direct airflow through the pants. This also makes the pants extra breathable when engaging in high intensity activity like cycling, which I have already experienced and is great. I permanently wear these side zips half open. If you secretly want to wear some kind of weird underwear, this might be an issue. Then there are these super slick looking cargo pockets which I really like. Uh, when closed, they are almost invisible. They're super flat and the outlines are very angular and aggressive, but asymmetrical and almost geometrical looking. Single-handedly zipping them back with the tension zips uh, works really well. Op opening up a very big storage space about the same size as a flag pocket or other acronym cargo pockets. And even though there aren't a lot of pockets on the pants, they luckily still have the two telephone pockets in one in both cargo pocket. These are pockets that I have now become so accustomed to that I actually really don't suffer pants without them anymore. The last few months I really noticed that I barely want to wear any other pants than my acronym pants anymore because it just annoys me if a pant does not have them. This is also resulting in a situation that I'm kind of selling all my other pants, partly to recuperate from buying these, but also because I feel I want to and also fundamentally want to shrink my wardrobe and wear less pieces more because they are super great, which I really feel like I can do with acronym pants. And it's also a better way to justify paying such an amount for a garment, I think. I personally think that buying super expensive but very good clothes uh, is worth it if you want to wear them all the time and do so which is kind of the opposite of, for instance, buying a very expensive suit and only wearing it for special occasions. That to me would be kind of a waste. Zipping the cargo shut again is a bit less easy because the back of the pant has more slack, so the tension is not really strong enough. Also, the overhanging flap is a bit in the way, getting caught in the zipper if you are not careful. I did find a way to do it though, which is temporarily folding the flaps upwards and either lifting your leg or bending forward to create tension in the back of the thigh. This is of course a bit silly, but it is an effective way to single-handedly zip up the pockets if you want to. And if you've just paid 2K for a pair of pants and are clearly insane, who the fuck cares about being a bit silly, right? So that covers all the pockets. There are two more zippers on the pants on the back of the calves, allowing you to zip open quite a large portion of the lower leg. And as I mentioned before, great for airflow, but also convenient if you are wearing low top shoes to make the pant cover your ankles better when it rains. There is even a little hook at the front uh, with which you can clip your pants to your shoelaces with. Beware that it can be quite difficult to unhook your laces again though, or I maybe I'm just an idiot, but I have had quite a hard time with it. Inside the zip part is a piece of Gore-Tex that extends to the back when zipped open. The cuffs around the ankles are made of the before mentioned two layer stretch fabric, which feels really nice and light and looks super cool and futuristic with the kind of honeycomb pattern it has. Let's not forget the crotch zipper, which is a two-way AcroGuard zip. First, I thought it was a bit overkill, but now I actually do find it quite convenient using the lower zip for making pit stops. Do I like the exposed zipper? I don't mind it, but I don't find it necessarily looking better or more convenient than a concealed zipper. It does allow some extra breathability during high intensity activity by opening it up, but that might also be a bit provocative for some. I do have to admit the little zipper at the bottom looks a bit fun. 
Okay, so let's talk about sizing because this is a bit of a thing. I initially bought a size medium from the mother side uh, because that's my normal size in which I wear most garments and which has been a great acronym fit up until now. I am a 176 centimeters tall, weighing somewhere towards 70 kilos, but these were absolutely huge. I took some shots so you can see, but they just, they just looked ridiculous. Waist had to be singed way too much and there was like so much room I could probably have fit my P30s in there. And when I was writing this, I didn't think it would look great to have to wear another pair of pants inside the pants because I, I thought that would just look very bulky. But very recently I have also copied the P37, which I will obviously also discuss in another video. And I can actually fit my medium P37 inside my small P38. And it's actually very comfortable and looks just fine. So that was definitely something that I did not expect. Now we also know the J1W is still coming, so maybe with that in mind, these pants are also meant to be able to accommodate some bigger boys. But that's not me, so sadly I had to send them back and look for a size small in the community because small was already sold out on the mother side. Only seeing one ungrilled for two and a half thousand dollars, my confidence in finding one for an acceptable price was starting to diminish already. But then I met the most friendly gentleman from Hong Kong called Gregory Lam who was so amazingly nice to sell the pants to me for the price that he paid. And if you know anything about Hong Kong trade policies, you know how damn lucky I am. I gave him my trust because my Indonesian mate, William, uh, vouched for him, paid him friends and family and received the pants in literally three days. Three days, people, from Hong Kong to Holland. That same week, I ordered something from the UK, which took three weeks. What? Anyway, amazing person, amazing pants. Thank you so much, Gregory. Thank you, William. They were brand new and now they fit great. Got the bag jack belt to keep it nice and mean. And yeah, they fit just right. I really do need a belt though, because I have a 30 inch waist and these pants being a size big, still have a 32 inch waist, but that's standard for the size that I wear and the fit that I like, so. The length comes up a tad short now when sitting or cycling. So the pants creep up a little, but I do think it looks really good when standing because Gore-Tex doesn't necessarily drape very nicely as you can see in the medium footage that really doesn't look good. So I do like them in the length they are now, but this does keep me from using the lace hooks when cycling because that really pulls uh, when I bend my knees. So I'm quite fearful that it might rip or break something uh, in the movement. This is not really an issue though. And I really like how the pants look when standing. So do be aware of the size. If small is your regular size, then I'm afraid this is not the fit for you because I don't think these were released in extra small. Then moving on to comfort, as I suggested before, they are actually really comfortable, though you might not expect that from Gore-Tex pants. I'll be honest with you, since I got a new job about three months ago, I have been blessed with the opportunity to work from home a lot, which I love, but if I'm not leaving the house, these are not my number one pants, my number one choice for comfort. I wear my P30s and 31s a lot, and since I got my P37s, I have actually worn them the most. I had some doubts when I just got them, but they are kind of slowly becoming maybe my favorite pants. In relation to comfort and wanting to wear them all day around the house. But if I head to the office or go outside at all, the P38s are definitely my go-to pants right now. Um, and definitely this season, which is autumn. And well, I don't really have to explain. It just, it rains, rains, rains. And this, it, these are perfect for that. Also on the weekends, I reside in the country where I commute to by bike. So then I definitely would not want any other pants. Last week I rode in the pouring rain for two hours and my legs were completely dry. And that was just an amazing feeling. One thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that the inside of the stretchy part has a quite pleasant feeling on the skin. The Gore-Tex most breathable parts have the same micro grid uh, backer that the, as, as the jackets have, but the stretch part has an inside that's quite similar to the inside of dry skin. It's, it's a tad less soft, but it definitely feels less cold to the skin than the micro grid backer. So that's very nice. Now I want to do a little comparison to the other P38s that came out this year because the P38 is clearly the acronym pant of 2021 being a new model released in four iterations in one year 
which I believe is a first for acronym. So I guess Erlson is very content about this model, demonstrated also by the fact that he seems to have swapped his P30s for them entirely in his public appearances on social media. So the most popular and now sought after version is the P38E that came out in the same season as the GT, um, around April, I believe. They sold out immediately. They are made of encapsulated nylon. They feature chrome zippers, deep pockets. There's a zippable vent in the back and were demonstrated in two videos, one about the pockets and one in which Erlson shows us that despite encapsulated nylon not being a very stretchy fabric, and can still do head kicks in them. I personally don't find the idea of encapsulated nylon very appealing. Also, I don't necessarily like the chrome zippers aesthetically. Then this fall, two more iterations were released. First, the P38 DS in dry skin, released in black as well as in REF. The latter are selling out the fastest. These feature reverse coil deep pockets and an extra pair of telephone sleeves uh, on the outside. Detached cargo pockets similar to the ones on the P30s. Back pockets and the cuff zips on, on the front instead of the back. Now, even though I love DS, I don't actually think that this model really benefits from that fabric. The whole construction looks a bit weird to me, if I'm honest. I think it's too bad that there are no tension zips on them because I, I really like tension zips, which is also why I got the P37s. And the cuff zips on the front look kind of weird, actually. I don't know. And then the fourth release is the P38 AD. Now, these I actually really like. They are a combination of Polartec Alpha Direct on the inside and dry skin on the outside. So I kind of have to take back something that I said just now about dry skin not being the right fabric for these pants. But I also feel that the P38 AD just looks so different that I actually barely find it a 38 because it's so different looking. It's, it's a very different pant. I mean, I understand that probably the fit block is the same, but just the overall look, it has a very different vibe to me. But that combination of Alpha Direct on the inside and dry skin on the outside just sounds amazing to me. They are also the most clean looking of the bunch. I mean, they still have the front tension zip groin pockets, uh, this time with two-way zippers. But other than that, as I already said, they barely look like P38s mainly because they are missing the cargo pockets. There are two foam pockets, luckily, and deep pockets. There's no zipper on the cuffs, just a jogger type cuff. The most special feature is probably the fact that they are reversible, also having deep pockets and foam pockets on the inside of the pants and giving a very comfy, fluffy look uh, with the gray Alpha Direct fleece worn on the outside. I thought that the outer layer of dry skin, which is kind of rough, would not be comfortable to wear against your skin, but I turned my P37s inside out and it's fine. I would definitely prefer the AD on the inside though and I don't really see the benefit of wearing the AD on the outside apart from looking like a furry. So yeah, these definitely look like the pinnacle of comfort. Who knows, maybe I'll end up with some eventually. The size chart looks about the same as the GT though, so as do the other P30s by the way. So I think this will also require to size down. But back to the Gore-Tex. Okay, so the burning question is, do you need Gore-Tex pants? I know Gore-Tex is a bit of a point of discussion in the tech war community with fans and the haters on both sides. But I also have the feeling that the latter mainly comes from, for some reason, quite a big portion of the community hailing from Southern California, where Gore-Tex is kind of overkill for obvious reasons. But if you live in a climate that is very wet or sees very snowy winters, I would definitely think that a pair of pants like these uh, is very relevant. It definitely is for me. I just bought an e-mountain bike to do bike tours with and to commute for quite long distances within all conditions. And these pants have already, but I am sure will give me much more pleasure in the future in this context and keep me dry and shelter me from wind. Also, I can't wait to sit in the snow with these. The stretch fabric is really great, as I mentioned before. I feel no restrictions in movement at all. These are great active pants. Downsides, there are not that many pockets on them. But then again, if you are wearing Gore-Tex pants without a Gore-Tex jacket to accompany it, that, that really doesn't make any sense. So, And Gore-Tex jackets usually have pockets for days, so I think uh, I, I will be all right anyway. 
And even though I really like the front pockets, I do still kind of miss the deep pockets a bit. A little less since I discovered that I can wear my P37s inside, which I will probably do quite a bit from now on. So I guess I will be using it as an overpant as it was meant to. So, you know, ah, Errolson, you fucking genius. Also, I don't really know where the deep pocket should have been or could have been, but I'm also not a designer. Back pockets maybe would have been nice. The flaps that go over the cargo pockets do really protect them very well from the water, but they also make opening and closing of those pockets a bit cumbersome. I do have to say that when cycling, having stuff in the phone sleeves inside the cargo pockets doesn't necessarily feel very comfortable because you can really feel them on your leg. Probably because those pockets are placed just a little bit to the front, whereas the foam pockets on the P31, for instance, are placed very much on the side, which uh, I really appreciate. The opening and closing of the cuff zippers can also be a bit cumbersome because the inner fabric tends to get caught in the zipper. So you need to do that a bit carefully by pushing the inner fabric inwards while closing the zipper. Oh, there are two pull tabs on the front that can be used to cinch the waist which can be convenient if for some reason you do not have a belt at your disposal. It's not particularly comfortable, so I wouldn't really use them if it was not an emergency, but it's nice they're there. So that rounds up my P38 GT video. I hope you liked it. It took me a minute to finish it, but uh, it's also pretty long right now, I, I presume. I still have some other acronym stuff lying around that I haven't talked about yet. It's like the Play6B DS I'm right, wearing right now. As I said, I just got a, the P37. Also, uh, to keep me warm this winter, I got an H5 and a used, but in great condition, NG8 and the hype of the NG, uh, NG4, of course. So that, that, that I can talk a bit about this in another video. So yeah, stay tuned. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you do, and I will see you in the next video. See ya.